Welcome everyone to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained. This is DM Bloodworth, and as you can see by the uh, graphics, I'm going to be uh, featuring Sword Coast Legends, which is a uh, computer RPG uh, game. Sword Coast Legends was put out uh, around 2015, and um, it was released on PC first. It's a it's a single player multiplayer uh, experience. Uh, where you can, uh, as a single player, you could play, uh, you know, a character and join up with groups of other players, and uh, or you could run through the uh, the story mode in a solo uh, in a solo mode, or you could actually play as the dungeon master, and uh, and run run a group of you know five players through a dungeon that you either created yourself or a dungeon that was uh, randomly generated and then you're able to tweak the uh, you're able to tweak the experience as the players go through it so it was a pretty unique uh, gaming experience um, you know something I hadn't uh, experienced in you know in my computer gaming uh, experience leading up to that in 2015 when when the game was being built up and um, you know, it's it's set in, you know, it's set on the the Sword Coast, uh, which is part of the Forgotten Realms uh, setting, and um, the, the the major feature it was building up to uh, the release of the Rage of uh, Demons, uh, the Rage of Demons uh, campaign um, book or booklets uh, that were coming out from uh, Wizards of the Coast. So, the game itself. You know had a, a great deal of potential and you know for the most part its initial launch um, you know had met that potential in a lot of ways and then the you know the the some of the pitfalls of multiplayer uh, multiplayer games uh, started to hit the uh, hit the community and and what I mean by that is is that if you're familiar with uh, with MMOs and or multiplayer games, the the voraciousness of of computer gamers when they come into an RPG in particular, uh, as far as uh, burning up content, you know, and then making demands on the developer to add new content in. You know, is something that's very, very difficult for developers to anticipate, uh, especially if they don't have, you know, much experience actually doing it. And I think that's one of the issues that the game community and the, and the game developers faced, you know, fairly early on. They never anticipated the number of hours certain gamers could dedicate to a game and burn through their content. Um, I know personally one player that was putting in 16 hours a day for the first week of the uh, game, and uh, and he had completed the entire, you know, game inside of you know probably five to six days uh, of just continuous play, and um, and that's something that you know unfair to a developer. It's something that they really can't uh, they can't build a game for you know they can't release that much or have that much uh, content ready for release um, you know and still make the the release time that they were looking to uh, you know to put out there the current the current system is um, you know has the the uh, the expansion of uh, the Rage of Demons, and um, they stopped developing uh, for the game, so they stopped adding uh, content to the game back in 2017. And uh, but players can still continue creating their own content using the uh, using the Dungeon Master tools that are actually in the game. So uh, so there's still a community built up around this game there are still people playing it on both the you know the PS4 and the uh, and the PC and 
and, and you can still find, you know, um, a Facebook community uh, where you can link up with other players and, and or in game and link up with other players. And you can still play this game. It is still a fun game to play. And it's a uh, it's not solely dependent like an MMO on huge server populations. Once you get once you get a handful of players uh, available to play, uh, you're pretty much set. You're you're okay to go uh, forward. You don't need hundreds of players to interact with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch uh, switch over to the game and show you an introduction. You know and uh, and hopefully through the first uh, the first adventure or two, um, and still keep the video length around an hour. So I'm going to switch views here, and so now this is your opening scene, and uh, or your opening screen. So I can go to player and play as a player, or I can select dungeon master. Uh, I'll just show you dungeon master very quickly. So this is my dungeon master. Uh, identity here, so just Bloodworth, the Dungeon Master. I chose my icon, um, so the players will actually see this in the game on the game map when I am moving around from room to room, um, or what I can do is I, I can change it to different colors. This one is, is uh, the default blank. You cannot see so the players won't be able to see when I'm lurking inside a room watching their progress. You know, and then when I bring these back in, I believe that was the original. This came along with the, uh, I bought the, uh, the collector's edition. So this was like the legendary collector's edition, um, got the stature and everything. DMs get ratings. And so out of five, my, uh, my DM ratings for fun was a 4.3 for uh, for the story was a 4.3 and for the challenge was a 3.8 which means that as you know the players are going through it at the end of an adventure there they rate their experience and and the the gameplay provided by the uh, dungeon master uh, in those three categories and um, I mean there, there was some you know there were some problems with this as well and some people were worried about um, you know, some people were worried about, well, it's very easy to tank someone's ratings or, you know, artificially boost someone's ratings. And, and so, you know, it's just something that's out there if you're, you know, if you as a dungeon master are trying to, you know, trying to improve on these scores, you know, then I would just keep it like that. I wouldn't worry so much about the level. I would worry about, well, how do I increase it? All right. Then at least I know that I'm, uh, you know, I'm trying to work on, on those issues that might be a weak spot. Also under Dungeon Master Zone uh, or Mode, I can go and I can create or edit a module. I can start a campaign, which will be a string of adventures, or I can just do a dungeon crawl, which is like a one shot or a, uh, or it could be a randomly, as it says here, a randomly generated dungeon that I'd open up to anybody, you know, out there. Um, I will do a separate video on Dungeon Master mode uh, when I know that I have a group of players that want to jump in uh, with me and I'll, I'll show my, uh, I'll show the one, I'll show the one dungeon that I actually, you know, put out there. So the two dungeons that I've created here, this is a base model which is what I use to just store my monster sets because you can create your own monster set. And then this is my mega dungeon. All right, and so the mega dungeon has several, you know, and I know you can't read all of this, but there are several uh, storyline links within the game that I created, within the dungeon that I created that will fire off the next, uh, We'll fire off the next part of the adventure. But I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to player mode. So 
So you can have a number of characters. Um, I don't exactly know how many slots you can have, but I have quite a few already filled up. You can play a drow when you um, when you've picked up the Rage of Demons uh, downloadable content. Uh, I, I picked up the Rage of Demons for free because I was a you know a uh, an early starter. I, I, I bought in the uh, you know, on the legendary starter pack or whatever it was called at the time. So I have several characters. I have a, uh, a first level ranger uh, that I can play with. I have a first level fighter dwarf. This is my first character at level 28th uh, rogue. So I brought him up to maximum level. And uh, on your Steam account, you actually unlock achievements for hitting 20th level for hitting 20th level for a uh, for a particular class and then hitting 20th level uh, with a uh, with a particular race of that class and, and so you know you, you you've hit several different achievements uh, when you hit that maximum level for each of the characters that you're playing so um, now these characters here, I'll just go back through these characters here. <coughs> these are my characters that are in uh, that are in several other campaigns and writing projects that I'm doing. So, Tiv Bloodfoder is uh, you know is my my thief character. He's the leader of his particular band of. Uh, chaotic neutral mercenaries uh, types. This is my uh, half-orc ranger and uh, she is part of that same you know that same group. This is my chaotic evil cleric. All right uh, she is uh, you know also part of that group. This here is my uh, future necromancer. It's not quite a ne necromancer yet at second level. Um, also part of that group and then uh, that's pretty much it. I had another character I don't think I actually recreated him in this uh, in this game. So I'm going to start with my paladin because I haven't played with a paladin before and uh, I'm going to jump in. There's two different campaigns. You have the Sword Coast Legends and you have the Rage of Demons so I'm going to go into Sword Coast Legends and I'm going to start new. I'm going to go solo. And start game. Legends tell that after the time of troubles, the elven goddess Sehanin Moonbow wept for those divine souls that fell in the God's War. From her eyes fell the moon. I'm just going to skip ahead because uh, that volume might be too loud for you. I'm going to make sure I change that. So Ah, you're finally awake. You were scaring the horses. You were thrashing around in your sleep. The trail boss thought you were possessed. <coughs> Alright, so it, it starts off with a, you know, a click uh, text, you know, but then they'll do voiceover for some of the engagement. So, uh, sorry about that. I had a Tell me night. about it. I had a nightmare that the world was ending, but I didn't screech and flail like my face was on fire. Bellamy says he had the same dream I did. Oh, but that damned halfling was probably just poking fun like he always does. He's a good lad, but you know as well as I, if there's a weakness in your armor, he'll do all he can to poke it. Aye, he's not. He just rubs me up the wrong way. Jokes around all light-hearted, but the minute you shoot back, he gets all cranky and ready to fight. But he's a damn good soldier, and I'm glad to have him here. That nightmare I had makes me think we might be needing his blades in the coming days. 
I know the answer. It sounds like we all had the terrible Aye, nightmare. something to mention to Palan when we get to the guild house in Luskin. Maybe he'll give us a foul taste and purple concoction that bubbles loudly and doesn't do much else. Nightmares aside, we got work to do. Got to find that fool halfling and get this caravan packed up and ready to move to Luskin. The merchants are breaking camp as we speak. Most wagons are tied up and ready to go. We got a few stragglers that might need a hand getting ready. Bellamy went up ahead to scout the road. Haven't heard from him in a little while. He was cranky with a headache when he left, so I'm guessing he picked a fight with one of the trail scouts up there. Right, so Good. Go he should be up the road a ways. Listen for the sound of that fool shouting curses at the sky. Alright, so now you can you can scroll in or out with your mouse button. You can, right away. You can click on the spot and move back and forth. Uh, you can move your camera, you know, um, outwards and go scrolling way ahead. It has a shadow of war, which means that it prevents you from seeing very far out into your, uh, you know, outside of what would be your view. I can't see the caravan there. I'll come back to myself. Now, one of the things the players did ask was for a WDSA movement, uh, but that was never put in. So, in this guild chest, I can see what's, uh, you know, what's in this chest here, and I can see what my now, all of my players have contributed to this player stash, you know, um, so my, my character already has equipped the gear that, um, that he was going to get from there. So he, he did have access to some pretty powerful stuff that uh, he doesn't quite have the level to use yet. So that's in the player's stash. So when you go to these guild chests, other guild members can pop things into that chest and you'd be able to, uh, you'd be able to see that as well. So here's my character. And so it so shows his inventory and what he currently has equipped. So he has uh, a couple healing kits, a couple healing potions, uh, some uh, potion of re uh, restoration, uh, which kind of recovers you, uh, brings you back from death. And some basic, some basic armor that he started off with. He's only first level, so he's not going to be able to do very much. So he's a he's a paladin. He has an 18 strength, a 12 dexterity, a 14 constitution, a 10 intelligence, a 12 wisdom, and a 10, um, a 10 charisma. And it shows his different uh, abilities and, and such that he has. So here's his abilities. And everything has a tree, so under the Crusader tree, he could follow these here. Under Avenger, he hasn't unlocked anything yet. Uh, you know, not able to unlock this until level 3. This here is his life. You know, so he does have some healing that I put in the hot keys already. War it needs to be second level to open up this tree. Great weapons training. So he needs a two-handed weapon in order to use this, uh, which he's not currently using because he's a uh, he's a sword warrior. So he's going with shield. So he won't put any points into that. Um, Marshal, and so he has some skills in there, and then these are the skills and proficiencies, you know, generic skills and proficiencies. And back to Crusader. So here's his journal. Uh, shows how he's doing uh, running along the map. 
no notes on the session and then options. So I'll close this. I do want to see what weapons. So So there are some, some weapons that you can use right away. Um, Two-hand weapons. That's two-handed. Um, Fish's Fang is a dagger. My captain's dagger. It really doesn't have any, <coughs> any one-handed weapons that no, a it's mostly daggers and short swords and everything. This is because my uh, character started with a uh, you know my highest level character is a thief. I can put this. Uh, I can put the shield though. The burning. Should carry that. Armor. Put the other stuff in. As you wish, I can do that. See, I, I just clicked on this person. I can get a little quest from him. I thought the roads near never, uh, never winter were rough, but uh, this is something else. I am finding some interesting herbs. All right, so I can have a conversation with him. Yeah, 
ask him about collecting herbs. Where do you need to go? Alright, I'll help him find some. So I picked up a little quest from him. Yes? Here's another quest giver. I can help you find um let me see what we can do. Alright, so as you can see I'm starting to on the top right hand side, I'm starting to add these uh Basically, take everything you can find. So you know you're picking up the, you know, you can hear that scribbling sound. And I that way do you know. hope there's something magical in this one. There's a general general goods vendor, and you can sell some of the stuff that you have in your inventory. Um, I want to. I can sell these things. Yeah, you know, if I wanted to sit here and sell all that stuff. When you when your inventory fills up, it's it's a good idea to at once. So. Again, I'm just trying to. Of course. Right away. As you wish. At once. Of course. Looks like I should be a man over there, but I guess I can. Right away. As you wish. I can do that. Don't worry about me. Just taking on a bunch of bandits by myself. All in a day's work for Bellamy Lightfingers. I was out here scouting the road and these two idiots jumped me. Which was a bastard thing to do, since I hadn't had my morning stretch. After the night I had, though, I was ready for a fight. And these two were well trained. Felt good putting them down. Yeah, these guys weren't your normal starving, no-skills, hit-like-a-pillow-fight bandits. If there's more of them running around, Jarhild will have her hands full. It's too late. It's completely blocked off. I can hear Jarheld now. You went around when the bandits attacked. Where was you? Try and stop me. When you kill uh, At those once. guys, you can. Of course. Right away, as you wish. We obviously can't go this way. I can do that. Of course. So he will follow. Right away. And you can, you can select and see what he actually does. His tactic. 
so we'll keep them on follow. As you wish. I have to go back to the caravan. I can do that. And we can already see. Hi, there you are. Come for the fun part, have you? This is one hell of an ambush for a bunch of bandits. That's because these are more than mere bandits. They're mercenaries, paid to assassinate members of your guild. Here they come! They never learn, do they? Yes, we won that one. Lady of Dreams, we thank you. I am Elidia Maethelin, priestess of Sehanin Moombo. With me is Lerithar Golgrin, my friend and bodyguard. You are members of the Order of the Burning Dawn, right? We're not way off here. No, but your head'll be off in no time if you don't explain yourself, and quick! We're out here searching for a caravan that was attacked just an hour ago. It was being guarded by members of the Burning Dawn. That must be my sister Bryn's caravan! We were hoping we could stop the attacks, or at least rescue the people from the other caravan, but I'm worried we're too late. Maybe there's some way we can help you avoid their fate. We've seen a lot of mercs in this area. I think they must have a base of operations nearby. Some at temporary. I want one of the caves. Then it's settled. Lerithar and I will join you. This will be a lot easier with four of us than with two. Let's go quickly before they have a chance to regroup. If we do this right, one guard at the caravan will do. Go then and hurry your arse so we can get back to the job at hand. Search for a cave or any other structure the mercs could hide inside. The caves in this area are full of goblins and the like. I can't imagine they'd be too happy with mercs tromping about in their territory. If they get in our way, they'll die like everyone else. Before we go, a friend in Luskin gave us this. It's a sending stone, specially enchanted to allow us to speak freely through it for the next few days. Any of us left behind in camp can keep up with what the rest of us are doing. Well, this ought to be fun. All right, so you can select your, your party members. So I already have my four party members selected up. And you can change the order. Um, but I'm going to take these four. Miss this little uh, quest there. At once. So you can see there's, there's quite a bit of uh, magic items that they're dropping, and. You can disperse these items now amongst, uh, amongst all of the characters. So you can go through and see what everybody is using, what they can use, and, and just distribute it as you go along. Your characters, you can you know, increase their levels, and you're managing your entire party of four. You know, so uh, as far as you can select the abilities of each, Check your, your journal and see what, uh, 
what missions you've completed already. Take a look at your map now and see what you've unlocked. The session shows what each you know character has done so far. And then back to closing. So that's that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go, you know, too far into this. The the movement once again is is click. You click out in the wilderness. I do hope there's something magical in this one. Now you can see in the mini map over here. I already see that there's some red dots. Those are enemies. Of course. <laughs> right away. As you wish. Right. By the light of the moon! A well-deserved victory! I can do that. At yeah, once. Now, as you can see, that they, they will continue to... Uh, of course. Your party follows you, and they will... They will do their functions uh, the as, as they're supposed to. You know, so you don't have to make a man completely. However, great. in very tough battles, you can hit the you can hit the space bar, and now you can start directing individual yeah yeah characters to go into certain locations. You click on them and then you can set where they're going so like there's my main character and I can spread out and I can right send away. him here and then I'll go on Bellamy here and I'll put him here now when I hit the sp space bar they are going to go to those four different points or at least I <laughs> oh that's because I have them all on follow so if I take them off of follow they would do their specific tactic. There's another mercenary uh, body to loot. <coughs> so as you can see, I mean, it's a top-down view. Graphics are pretty good, although I wish you could you can come in a little bit tighter. Um, the gameplay is, is fairly simple. Uh, as you gain, ex you know, as you gain skills, you just pop them into your uh, quick bar down at the bottom, and you can see I have it split with the inventory items and then skills. And you can select and okay and move the characters yes. in a different order. Sure. Each one takes the lead; the others follow. So I'm going to shut out, out of this and let's exit to me. Like I said, next time I'll, I'll show uh, the Dungeon Master mode uh, in particular. Um, So there you have it. You have Sword Coast Legends. Uh, once again, a uh, it's a free-to-play game. It's uh, available on Steam. It's a uh, both a single-player and multiplayer uh, RPG experience set in Dungeons and Dragons, loosely based on 5e, and uh, you know, pretty good game. It's it's fun to it's fun to play if you're if you, you know never played it before. It's a, it's a nice uh, game to kind of break you into um, role-playing games on, on a kind of computer system that's, uh, you know, it's simple. It's simple rules, so it's very easy, very quick to pick up, and uh, you have plenty, plenty of options to play all different types of characters and, and kind of figure out the, you know, the, the combination that you like uh, playing the most. So uh, once again, thank you for joining in the... Uh, you know, on my uh, video pa uh, podcast. 
if you're uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, you know, please feel free to subscribe. Hit the bell so that you see uh, new content as it's coming in. A uh, you can also find me uh, under Edward James Bloodworth on Facebook uh, on the on-screen gaming community, and uh, obviously as well as uh, my YouTube channel here. So um, if you haven't subscribed, remember to subscribe, and uh, I look forward to seeing you on a uh, video screen uh, sometime soon. Have a good day.